Hello everyone, welcome back to another one of my videos here. Today, towards the end of the season, I have developed another Death Wish deck. You know, Monsters is my favorite faction, so I've came back to the Death Wish. Um, leader ability, taking a look at the Monsters faction, what kind of cards are in there that seem to be interesting, haven't been used much. And um, the card that I've looked to create this deck around is pretty much this one here, Weavis Incantation. So a really cool looking card. Um, one of the crones and uh, it's a card which activates the death wish abilities of death wish units as you play them down on the board without having to consume them right so before I go ahead and you know discuss how we're looking to use this card in this deck really and all that kind of fun stuff I'm just going to take you guys through this deck list bottom up and explain as I usually do how best to play each card throughout a situation and match so at the bottom here, to begin with, we have two Wild Hunt Hounds. So I just like to add these cards into the deck because I feel it's nice to have passive points, meaning you know you can just you can pass um, on a round and they'll keep ticking away, and it forces your opponent to have to commit a bit more to secure a victory over that round if you've passed. So, you know, we do have a number of units which can go tall because we're consuming and we have Egan in this deck. So it doesn't make sense to me to add the Wild Hunt Hounds in. So at the end of your turn, they'll be boosting by one. Um, the way you can play the Hounds is, is pretty versatile, as I said, because of the ability we have to meet the dominance condition, typically with a monster's faction. But I like to kind of play them with Egan in the first round. You can have them ticking away together. It's quite nice to try to win the first round just with a few cheap bronze cards after playing Egan. So, but flexible to use throughout a match. Moving on, we've got Squirrel here. Um, just allows you to banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. Whatever you think is, is worth going for. They could be the Aratusa Students. Uh, could be the Flying Redanian, Crow Mother. Could be Keltalus if your opponent's trying to bring it back in one of those matches. Uh, just use it as you need to, guys. We do have one Endrega Warrior in this deck. Um, you know, it just adds some consumes, and that's important for us because we are playing Deathwish units. We do need a way to activate the Deathwish ability. We do that through consumes in our deck. And Endrega Warrior is nice because if you place two Deathwish units together, play Endrega Warrior between them. He's going to consume them both and activate both of their abilities. So it gives you kind of like a two for the price of one um, activator here with Endrega Warrior because it allows you to consume adjacent units. If it's an insectoid, you get to spawn a drone. We're not really fussed about that. Um, you can use it on Egan for extra value. Say if Egan's getting damaged, um, is losing armor, for example, and you consume Egan, you'll get an extra drone out of the consume. So use it when you need to, guys. Into the first round, try to look to have at least in Drago Warrior or Bargast with you. Uh, we've got Pillar in this deck. Just allows us to purify one of our units if it becomes locked or poisoned, um, or if it gains any other condition. But important thing to note is you can use Pillar also on a resilience unit. So, you know, the meditating mages, they gain resilience. Don't be afraid to use Pillar on one of the Meditating Mages once it gains that status. Then we have Archie Spore. Um, this is just a thinning card in our deck, meaning you know we're drawing more cards out from our deck when we're playing this, so it increases the odds of getting something good in our deck that we're looking to get. Um, so you know you could go ahead and play this in the first round. It's all, it always makes sense to do your thinning as early as possible. So first or second round, this card would be good. And um, yeah, you know, after playing Egan, you can open this up um, and then drop like Endrega Warrior or Bargeist to consume it. And you just thin out the other copy from your deck. Make sure you don't have both copies in your hand when you're going to play them. Then we got Foglets here. Foglets are very good for value. On Deathwish, you get to spawn Fog on the opposite row for three turns. Um, Frog does two points of damage at the beginning of your opponent's turn. So pretty nice value. You can use this as an activator for Haunt. When you're playing Weavess, um, you can use it. Even in the first round, you can use this card. Flexible throughout the match. Witch Apprentice. Does have the Sabbath condition. 
meaning we need 25 points or more um, in order for it to activate its boosting of self by two, okay? So the Witch Apprentice could contribute to those points. So if you're on 21 points, you play Witch Apprentice, that'll be 25. It's gonna start boosting, right? Don't be afraid to take one into the first round with you or when you're playing Haunt. They're a bit more awkward to play in short spaces. So say if you've got like three or four cards left, maybe you don't want to take it with you then just because it might be harder to get Sabbath. But into a second round or a first round, feel free to play them or unless you're going into a long third round too. So feel free to commit one in the first round and try to save the other for later as well. Try to space them out. Then we've got another consume here. We've got Bargeist. On deploy, you get to consume an allied unit. This is also a two for the price of one um, nature of a card because you know you get to consume twice, one on deploy, and if we got dominance, you can consume another unit. I like to take Bargeist into the first round um, to activate whatever Deathwish unit we'll be playing off of the stratagem because we do have the um, Urn of Shadow stratagem. So the way we're opening up in this deck is with a Deathwish unit after we've played Egan. And then obviously you need another consume to activate that remaining death wish ability. So I like to use Bargeist in the first because it's already got a order of consume. So then you can go ahead and play your other death wish units out. So try to take Bargeist in the first. Uh, we do have two Rot Fiends in here. I did want to go ahead and add them in because I mean, look at that, man. You get five points of damage on death wish with this card. It's at 5 provision and a place for 10 points. That's very good value. So uh, it makes sense to take it in. Drawback with Rot Fiend is that the damage is randomized. So your opponent can work around this. Some of our cards, um, their value gets negated in some matches, such as Symbiosis, um, Squirtle, when the spawning Wandering Trents, which are like very low powered, for example. Or if you're versing Nilfgaard and they play at the Blight Makers, they have a 2, 3, and 4 powered unit. Because the, the damage of this is randomized, you might lose value on it. But um, that's why it's nice to play it when you're certain you're going to get value. So if you open up with Haunt into a round and then your opponent plays a 4 powered unit, that's like got an order ability or something like that, that's a good time to play Rot Fiend. Or even when we're going first, and um, as I said, we've got Urn of Shadow Stratagem. And if your opponent plays a good four power target, play Rot Fiend right away in the first round. So play this um, in the first, try to carry it with you, or with Weavess when you're playing it. Once again, another flexible card to use. We've got two. Imperial Manticore, great card. Destroy the lowest enemy. Um, same thing like Rot Fiend, guys. You can use this with the stratagem that we have opening. You can play it with Haunt or play it with Weavess. With Weavess, it's pretty deadly if we can pull it off because she'll double activate it for us by doing that. Then we have Karen. So Karen has the immunity tag. On deploy, you get to consume three allied units. So because I am playing Weavess in this deck, um, it made sense to me that like we're pretty much just going to be dumping as many death wish units as we can when we play her so Karen's nice to take into a round because at the end of the round after utilizing all of the weaves value you can just consume whatever death wish units we have with Karen also another good thing about it is as I said it's got immunity so it cannot be targeted directly by heat wave or other points of damage and um you can save kind of like your bigger points on the board. Like if you've got Osral down on the board, for example, you could even consume that and just negate your opponent's direct damage to, yeah, those kinds of points you got. So you can save points with Karen too. Got Osral in this deck. We are looking to play Osral just to consume Egan, this card here. And in consuming, you know, he's going to boost himself by that power. So it plays nine for 14. We'll be playing on the ranged row for Egan, but if Egan gets taken out, look into your opponent's graveyard and just find the next best thing or yours. This is a card for the very end of the match, typically. That's how we like to play it. Moving on to Maruna. So with Maruna, 
very deadly card this one because it allows us to seize a random enemy unit with four or less power drawbacks as i explained with manticore and rot fiend same kind of thing with maruna can be a drawback sometimes because conditioned um, on the fact that we need four or less power but um excellent card to use in the first round with stratagem or to play with haunt and weavers all across our um match when we're playing Uh, I do have matter in this deck and the reason I put in this deck is it allows us to draw the highest cost card and the highest cost card for us is haunt which is a very key part of our deck so to ensure that we get haunt I've put matter in here and another good thing with matter is that it extends the round and by extending the round that means if we've got engines down on the board such as wild hunt hound and witch apprentice they can um, generate more value for us because that means they get to tick a bit more on the board, okay? So Mata, you can play it whenever you get it, really. Um, I would say for our deck, try to get in the habit of playing our cards on the ranged row because we do have cards like this that are ranged row locked, like Mata and Weavess. And um, we may as well get in the habit of stacking that way because we don't want units spread across the rows because we want to aim to get Sabbath for the Witch Apprentice. Cave Troll we have in this deck as a means to protect Weavis Incantation. It's a defender. So that means they have to kill this before they get through to the row and target any units on that same row. Um, you definitely want to play this in the second or third round and this card is really in this deck just to protect Weavis Incantation because 9 times out of 10, if you play Weavis alone without Cave Troll, she just um, dies pretty much. So try to have Cave Troll down, say into the second round, and then you play Weavis right behind the Cave Troll, okay? I got Nugglefar, um, this card in our deck because it allows us to look at two random gold cards from our deck, then play one and place the other on top. So, you know, this is just a card to help us um, access our deck. Same with Mata. So we've got Nugglefar that can do that. We've got Mata and also the thinning with the Archie Spore. Pretty much it allows us to get what we need by the end of the match uh, with this deck. And with Nugglefar, try to play it in the first or second round just to ensure we're getting the value of getting a gold card on top of our deck and then drawing it as we move on through the match, okay? Um, try to play Nugglefar when you're a bit more certain of what's in your deck though. You don't want to kind of play it when you've got a deck full of golds. It could be a bit harder to access what you want and maybe you'll get something bad that you don't need at that time. Detlef Higher Vampire. Great premium card, this one. Uh, one of my favorites and basically we are looking to strictly use leader ability on Detlef when you play him he's, he's more of a final round play with Osril when you're looking to win the match in a short round and basically we double click leader ability onto him he comes out to the board and so on and you can kind of like send him to the graveyard bring him out onto the board that's his ability you've got two uses of that okay Weavis Incantation as I explained, um, this card is locked to the ranged row, and whenever you play a unit with Death Wish, trigger its Death Wish ability. So not only do we get to consume a Death Wish unit and trigger that, this has given us an extra activation of it. So you can imagine playing Maruna and Manticore behind this could be pretty epic. Um, drawback is that it's a 5 powered unit. A 10 provision is a bit costy to be honest to fit in a deck. And, um, you know, you could put so much effort into setting this up and it could just die. Because if someone's, if you're versing someone with a lot of heavy removal in their deck, it's pretty hard to have this stick to the board in all honesty. I'm not really going to lie to you guys and say this definitely works. It's kind of um, a draw dependent play and also really depends on your opponent's deck that you're facing. If their deck, as I said, heavy in removals, you probably can't get Weavis going in that match. But um, like I said, I've put Cave Troll in here to help make it consistent so you play cave troll and you play weavis behind it and you play weavis either in the second or third round i mean playing it with haunt could be very strong because you as you activate haunt you also activate the death wish units twice through her egan is just the card 
that we look to use in the first round to give us points to secure round control and also give us dominance for the wild hunt hounds help us get sabbath quick for the witch apprentice so first round card it gains armor equal to the number of cards in your hand on deploy so you want to play as quickly as possible and um, you know if egan gets poisoned or gets a bounty placed on it you can consider consuming it with your consumes then we just have haunt the scenario card um, it is nice to bleed into the second round after winning the first with haunt and uh, you know you can play cave troll weave s and then play haunt and then play your death wish units out or some kind of combination like that make sure you take two death wish units with you to activate this scenario and then we've got urn of shadows as a stratagem that's us to trigger a death wish um, ability of an allied unit so basically the way we look to use that is your first move of the match will be playing egan down on the board then your opponent goes plays a card that gives you the perfect option to choose what you want to do to their card you could play maruna and then click stratagem onto maruna and seize it if that's good or go manticore destroy it go rot fiend destroy it um, so if we go first we are very deadly with this deck usually and then our leader ability is just overwhelming hunger we get to destroy an allied unit spawn an ekimara in its row and boost it by the destroy unit's power ekimara is just this like i said we've got two charges of this leader and we're trying to strictly save this for debt luff if possible okay this is the deck guys we are making a mess with we vests and i uh, really hope you're going to enjoy it hope you're enjoying seeing these different decks that i'm putting out uh you know i don't really follow the meta i like to play off meta and keep it fresh for you guys so let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below thanks so they're playing soldiers pretty gold heavy hand We'll stack on the ranged row. Crumpy Pie, thanks for the raid, man. Really appreciate it. I saw your stream very briefly before I jumped on mine. Hope you had a good one, man. That's things. Death Wish shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. Playing Weavis. That's good, man. Awesome. Yeah, I saw you had a lot of viewers on. That's great. Good on you, dude. Hope your channel's doing well. That's what we want to see, you know? Going big. Where is the raid animation from? Um, That's just a generic one. That's uh, It's just available there as a generic option. It's not one that I've made. We could just kill this with a Rot Fiend, can't we? That seems... Really good to me. Five points of damage, guys, on Rot Fiends. It's pretty good. And when we go first, Death Wish feels excellent. You got raided thrice. Nice. I can definitely see. Yeah, so they're playing Blight Maker to counter Rot Fiend, obviously. It's randomized damage, yeah. Maybe we do this. Old days monsters was go bigger. Today every faction have the go big deck. Yeah, well, you know, I'm pretty much a monster main player. And I'm always looking for different ways to try to experiment with the faction. But in particular, Death Wish is a favorite for me. I do like relics too. So they just high rolled matter from us. <laughs> oh man, these guys never cease to amaze me. Let's double hit this. Yeah, I got a three point hit. It's okay, it's okay. Could have done better. 
We could go, so Matter gets us what? It will get us either Weavis or Detlef. Wow, they're going full leader? Oh my goodness. Really now? Full leader, guys. Oh my days. They're very serious. He hits this, right? He brings it down to five. He may want to kill it. Should we let him take this round? He spent pretty heavy here. He's going full leader. He's going this. How much more would I play on? I probably wouldn't play on too much more either. I'll let him take it. It's good to get full leader out. That's pretty big. <laughs> pretty big move. Oh wow, we're going into a freaking tie. Oh man, brace yourselves. This is going to be some epic stuff. I don't know if that's good. They committed full leader. <laughs> Man, we're going to go in heavy here. Oh, yeah, we've got a good hand too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a lot of access. I like the hand. I like it. Two random gold cards. Yeah, we pretty much get everything we need. Wow, this is going to be epic, guys. Right. So, we got leader here, Karen for extra activation. I think we're good. Yeah, yeah, I like it, I like it. Let's roll, let's roll. So, we're guaranteed the golds we need to. Ah, uh, he kills my Egan. You bloody... That's it, I'm going to make you pay, man. That's it. I'm going to get Weavis after you for that. It's really going hard for my graveyard. Yeah, I think I go Weavis first, isn't it? And then we go ahead and we play Haunt and we just like double activate everything. Should be nice. I will play Nagulfa because... I can choose which one of the golds. If I play Matter, it's going to be... Oh no, Matter will give me Weavis, won't it? Yeah, actually, I think it's still okay. Um, For the sake of getting into the match faster... Maybe it's Nuggle Fire now, isn't it? Yeah, let's do this. Very soon. Soon, sisters. Be right back. No worries, my friend. Pikeman double. I should probably play Maruna right away. We, I do have extra activators. Yeah, yeah. I think I play Maruna right away, guys. And um, I'm going to hit leader here. Ah, we didn't get the other one. Now, that would have been sweet if we got his other one. That's all right. Guess for lock? Yeah. Well, they're armored units. So, we... We on cruise control. <laughs> this is gonna be some epic stuff, man. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> get ready for it. Uh, get ready for it. It's coming. We're gonna kill his pikeman now with Manticore if it's the lowest powered unit. A actually, we're gonna double kill next. Yeah, we can we can wipe these out. Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, so we're going to go Manticore and should kill both because we've got Weavis down here. We want space. Uh, yeah, we do need space here because we're playing Matter and we're going to play Aussie. 
So it's two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, it's GG, man. It's GG. Yeah, it's GG. I knew it. Uh, like it activates all um, Death Wish unit abilities. Yeah, sure. I wonder if we could win the first just like with these cards. That'd be pretty cool. Could go something like Maroon or Romanticore here too for Stratagem. I mean, that's a massive Manticore target. I think I'll take it. So we do have dominance for the hounds if we want it. And that helps with the witch apprentice too. Just get them all stacked together. Feels nice playing those cards together. A lot of passive points, very deadly. Six point Manticore target, pretty good again. I think we're taking it. Pretty deadly opening round when we're going with Stratagem and Manticore. Even Maruna's pretty strong. So often they go leader ability and Junod whenever I play Egan against these guys. I think this is enough for now, just the Hound. Because we're quite far on points. Could kill it with a Gutting Slash. Yeah. Okay, we could go Witch Apprentice if that's a problem. Locking your Egan, that's a smart play. Very nice. Definitely a good backup plan if you don't have consumes. I typically tend to just consume it, that's how I play it. Because... I guess if I've got a card which locks, like a Guara or something like that, I'm more saving it if something of mine gets locked. But it is good. So what if we go like this now? Does that die to leader? It's hard coming up against a lot of removal. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna go Juno now, isn't it? Wow, okay. Got Stunning Blue. Giga. <laughs> Far out. Very interesting. If I do this, what if I try to bleed? He's got Wanderers too. Wow, man, you're making this super awkward. So 
So the next card be Wanderers. <laughs> the opponent knows everything. <laughs> yeah. He really does. I'm pretty unlucky with these matchups. They just got the counter to whatever I'm playing. So we can get double activation on Rot Fiend if she lasts. He's used a fair bit of removal. Giga, gutting slashes, leader. Hey, listen here. Listen well. Doesn't discard anything. I mean, playing Maroon is good. But I think Rot Fiend's better here. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Are you serious? We hit Coral twice? Ah, oh, what, dude? Um, If you want to link to this deck, it will be my next deck guide on YouTube and it should be released in the next day or so. So keep an eye out on my YouTube channel. You can hit the link in the chat. If you click exclamation mark YouTube, you'll get a link to my channel there. Okay, good. Don't have dominance. Crap. Yeah, good. Maybe I uh, play Witch Apprentice too. Okay. It's not a bad target. We care if I play like that. Boost by two. Only, f you know, he's just got one point more than us. Otherwise, it would be so nice for the hound just taken away again. I don't think I want to click the last leader because I'm just thinking about having Detlef and Karen as a final kind of play. Like one charge will go Detlef, and then you just finish with Karen to consume whatever else we got. Hopefully it's enough for us. Ah, so oh, this guy. This guy. <laughs> well done. I got dominance now though. Should we get 2-0? Do I have 2 o potential here? Maybe I save leader. Hold on, so I'm going up by 3. I mean, that that's pretty good for us actually. 
Yeah, I'll pass. Catch up if you can. Ah, he's got more. Oh, wow, he just gets out of it. Damn. Piece it together, all right? Yeah, that's for sure. Matter. So matter into Nagulfa into Karen. Okay. I think we keep it. Lemons. He's playing lemons. We don't want lemons. I don't want to see no lemons anymore, man. He's scarred me. He keeps killing Egan. It's not fair. With me, you'll forget your sorrows. Sounds good to me. Okay. So I'm guessing we're going Rotfiend next. We finish with Detlef. So leader charge is going to go Detlef. And then Karen's just going to consume uh final final charges here and here So I hit the charge now. Does it matter? We've got some points coming up, guys. You'd be surprised. Right fiend, that life is good. They got they got some points on the board sitting there too though. They got the heal, they got froth. <laughs> Watch if Rot Fiend hits this, alright? <laughs> oh my luck tonight. Just watch. Uh what do we want to do? Like this? Okay, <laughs> my luck got a bit better for once. Hey, we got it. Lovely, lovely. Little one appears. You can kiss my tail goodbye. Sure thing. Slam this down first. I always want to make sure it's got as much armor on it as possible. It's the best way to play Egan. So Matter gets us Haunt in our deck. Four consumes. We've got three consumes. And Drager, Bargeist, and Karen. 
but we didn't draw any fortunately So playing matter would put us on 19 points. I mean, it's kind of close to Sabbath for the Witch Apprentice. Let's do this now. You'll never forget this dance, she says. Pinkin, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to my stream once more. Appreciate you coming on. This is the first match of my stream. Hopefully you're going to give me some luck here to win this match. But we don't have consumes in hand. So, you know, it's looking a bit dodgy, man. We're a Deathwish deck. We need consumes here. Hopefully as we play on, we get something. Uh, double leader is not bad to get out of them, I guess. Why not? Plays Junod onto that. Yeah, I don't think we can really push here at all, to be honest. But this is fairly nice to get out, like, double leader charge. Quen and Juno, it's not bad. Um, kind of might just be tossing cards out here, I think. So he's going to play another card. I can play another card, and then I'll pass. Because without consumes, we're not really doing much. <laughs> okay, he wants to activate it for us. Um, let's put this here. Let him play one more, and then we'll pass. Because we really don't have the cards. Okay. Sure, why not? Just beat Blood and Wine, which are three, DLC again. Oh, nice, you're playing that again? Blood and Wine, man, that was a sick game to play, that one. I really enjoyed it. Mm, Hearts of Stone was mad, too. Yeah, it's a great game, great game. That love probably one of the coolest characters. Yeah, he's epic in um in Blood and Wine. I mean Regis is sick too, man. <laughs> Regis is an epic character. Olgir's one of my favorite too. I mean they're all great. There's so many good cards. Cards, um characters I should say as well. Cards in the game. Characters of that game. Pretty solid hand, isn't it? Yeah, not bad. Okay. So it's, it's got the mushy truffle totem. Yeah, right. So perhaps they're pushing in. They're playing like this. Hearts of Stone's your favorite. Um, what's his name? Hold on, I'm trying to... Yeah, Caretaker. How about the Caretaker fight in Hearts of Stone? Man, that's that's so cool, that fight. What a battle that one is. I had a lot of fun playing that. And um, the Ghost of Iris, when you got to kill her as well in there. That's <laughs> pretty crazy. Um, okay, so they're playing in a bit. If I play this, does it die? Probably does die, doesn't it? I mean, he could just pass to... Mm. I believe he plays on. Because he hasn't activated this yet. This dies with that cave troll. I don't think it really lasts, in all honesty. That's why we've got cave troll in this deck. But, you know, getting a heat wave out is pretty nice too, because 
that kind of a commit saves your scenario. It can save your tool cards like Egan at the end of a match. It's not too bad for us. So he'll click leader here and kill this, most likely. Yep. We expected it. Okay, so... We've got to be a bit hasty here now. Because they're up by a fair few points. If we could take one of these, I think this could be good. I mean, we could do that or we could hit Detloff double. Gives us 21 points. Puts us with Sabbath. Hmm. I might start like this. Okay. So we, we've denied them some value there now because they'll be triggering damage here too, which isn't good. Can we get the pass out of them for that? Let's have a look. Regis is going to be the next Gwent journey. That would be epic. I'm so down to buy it if that's true. Irish Shade is one of my favorite premium Gwent cards. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Well, here's Detlef High Vampire right here. You remember when you verse him in uh, Blood and Wine at this point? It's pretty crazy. Looks sick too. So they're pushing on here. Yeah. They really are. If I play Haunt, they could just pass. It's just not good for us. Maybe we go... Detloff. We can hit a leader charge. Do something with Karen. I'm trying to save Haunt and Osril. We've got Nugglefire in deck. Yeah. Oh, Rithwick. Welcome, my man. Thanks for the raid. Appreciate it, bro. What's happening, brother? Rithwick is in the house. This is, this is what I need for my stream. I need good luck from brother Rithwick. <laughs> yeah, doing good, thanks. How about yourself, man? How's things? Nice to see you on here. These guys are getting far ahead on points, aren't they? Maybe I'm playing Haunt now. How was your stream, man? Did you have a good time? I'm testing out some Weavis incantation um, at the moment with this deck here. There she is there. Ooh, so he's killed our Egan. Uh, we're going to make him pay. I mean, I guess it makes sense to play Manticore now. Do that. Let's do that. Yeah, good. That got us some points back up there. Nice. They've gone pretty hard in this round. I wonder what they got for later. So we've caught up on points, guys. Pretty nice. Hey, Rot Fiend plays for some nice value. Five uh, powered unit and it does five damage. It's low key. It's underrated. I haven't seen anyone play it, really. It's very nice. It was fun. Triple Weavis. Uh, no, not Triple Weavis. I know um, Bush, yeah, he done a crazy deck back in the day. I know that. But um, I guess it's modest Weavis. <laughs> We're just playing modestly here, man. Nothing crazy. We should try and make him go a card down, I think. Shouldn't we? What do we got outside of this, though? Egan's... I mean, Oswald's kind of messed up.
I'll go for it. We'll make him go down on points. Let's do this. I'm not in a rush to commit leader onto that remaining that love uh, point. We're ahead on points. We could save leader, you know? If he passes, now it's better for us. Maybe we'll just hold it. We could just put down... Could be Karen, Or maybe we're saving Karen next because we're going to have some... Yeah, we're going to have some Death Wish units. Is he playing on? Is he thinking of passing? Maybe he passes. Even better for us if he does. Plays on. Yeah, cool. He's going all in. Goes Giga. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Witch Apprentice is kind of weird in a short round. So if I play this, I go up by six. 37. I think I'll do that. I'll just leave it like that. I mean, he's throwing the kitchen sink at us here. He's throwing everything. <laughs> I really want to see what they're playing on with after this. Get some food? Yeah, no worries. It's a pretty small play. Small drill on play. Okay, do we have points for this? Yeah, we're good, we're good. All I have to do here is just pass. Yeah, nice. So we get card advantage and they've dumped everything at us. Only thing is, Oswald's small here, man. Egan's gone. I mean, we got Mata. Seven point play. I mean, in this short kind of space, it's good still. And we're card advantage. Nugglefar is a dead card. Definitely don't want this. Pella? Nah, I don't think so. We got two consumes. Wait, do we have leader charge left? I can't remember. And we got, yeah, I mean, we can use leader just for three points. Um, so what do we want to play out here first? They probably have Axie. Maybe they got Geralt Axie, right? We're pretty safe with the the charges. I could just throw this out. In opponent's graveyard. Uh oh actually, yeah, good call. We've got the um the little one over here. Yep. Thanks, Pinkin. Thanks for the heads up. Appreciate it. We're gonna go Melly Row. That's a good idea. I didn't check it out yet. Well, look, I could drop Bargeist now because we have leader to activate this. So let's make it awkward for them. And I mean, it's got to consume their waiting as well. As long as we've got the dominance. Yeah, that's cool. We're just going to do this. Gonna put some fog over there. Um, let's say the last card's Axie, right? 
I believe we have it. Smoke fuck, yep. Yeah, cool. Let's take it. Nice. Good win for us, guys.